Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. In this video, we are going to talk about not about creating change orders, but about how you can issue POs for your estimated cost of the change orders and request bids, and then produce a report that's going to show you. Um, your costs and your POs compared to your estimated costs of the change orders. So I'm going to go ahead and select our demo job here. And first I want to show you that report so that you can understand one of the very good reasons for issuing POs once you estimate the cost on a change order. But what I did was I selected the job and then I clicked View Approved COs. And I'd like you to take a look at this one report that I'm going to show you. And it's down at the bottom and it says all COs compared to POs and costs. We haven't done um, that many change orders for this job so it's easier for us to look at. But what you can see here is the estimated cost that you put in for each of these change orders. Lines, this is one change order and it has two lines. It's for adding an exterior door. Um, to the garage. Um, then it's showing purchase orders issued. You can see we did a purchase order for this one. And if you were watching some previous videos in the purchase orders section, you'll see that we did issue a purchase order for higher than our estimated cost. And I'm going to come back to that. We're going to actually go post some costs. I was pointing out that you probably want to revisit this change order. In, the, in a previous video and talk to the home buyer and maybe increase the change order because you underestimated what the cost would be. And you realized that once you were having to issue a PO to the vendor. Um, but right here we don't have a PO and right here we do. Um, then you can see how much the POs are over, like this one's over. This one hasn't had one issued so it's under. And then the costs that are attached to these particular POs. And that's by attaching a purchase order to a change order, that's how CHS can show you what actual costs you have spent for that change order. It can only do that if a purchase order is attached because it turns out that as people are entering bills and various things, um, they overlook you know, marking that it's a change order cost. So the only way I've been able to figure out to give you some report if you're interested in how much your costs for change orders have gone over is to do this type of report and come up with the costs that are attached to the change order POs, which is what we're going to be creating here for this hardware, is a PO for a change order. And then that way when you're posting the costs or the bills and you select the PO, it's going to know that it's change order costs just because of the PO. So even if you're not going to send out a PO, um, to the vendor for whatever reason. This can be a very handy or good reason for going ahead and attaching a purchase order to each change order line um, just so that you can monitor how much your actual costs are compared to change orders. And that has to be done via having a purchase order issued for that change order cost. So let's go ahead and let me take a look at that again and we'll issue a purchase order for this one that we haven't done yet which is this CO number for add the garage door and it's the hardware 4580 um, is our cost code so let's look and that would be this particular change order so let's drill down to it to see the lines that are on this change order and we um, could see if I edited this exterior door let me show you something we saw on that report that there was a, a purchase order issued for that, but you can click at the top of this window where you're editing um, change order lines to see what POs have been issued and I can see who it was issued to and the amount. So I can see that there was a purchase order issued for that and that it was um, actually for the same amount I was estimating for the change order. Like I said, this video is not about creating change orders, so I'm using some I've already created. But let's drill down on this line and just like we could see on the report if we click to see um, POs attached we're going to find that no records were found. So let's go ahead and create a PO but first I want to talk about real quickly um, 
about how you can add or edit vendor bids. Maybe you've done a change order line and you want to get a couple of bids for the costs in before you're actually creating a PO for this particular change order cost. There are whole videos about doing vendor bids, but let's go ahead and click it. And what you can see here um, is if you look at open list of vendors to use for requesting a bid for this 4580, if you've attached cost codes to various vendors, um, I could go, I could look down here under 4580, which is my cost code, and see that I have Cornerstone Hardware and another hardware one, and I could use this email to request a bid from them or drill down to see their contact information. Um, right here and call them up to get a bid um, and then you could post a new bid record for this let me just go ahead and click that meaning that yes I requested a, a bid let's close this and you're going to see that there's a line here waiting for us to get a bid total um, in for that um, let's say that we did get a bid in but it's for just two hundred dollars for the estimated cost um, so let's go ahead and edit this bid. Play like we got one from Cornerstone. We could also upload a copy of the bid. Now let's go ahead and just try $190 with a sales tax of eight and a quarter. And we'll see that it's 205. Let's just change this to 185. Just I'm wanting to get under what we actually estimated as our cost um, because I'm going to show you something. So I'll save that bid. And if I wanted, I could create a PO from this bid, and, and that might be handy, especially if I'd uploaded a copy of the bid. And once I open the PO, I could mark that it was for a change order. Um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and create a PO. Um, let me just look at this one more time so I'll remember what I was doing. Here we go. I think I did something too fast. Here we go, 185 was the amount it was to Cornerstone. But let's just create the PO from this screen. Um, maybe we don't do bids, maybe we're not issuing it from a bid. You don't have to do bids, you can just create a PO. And it's going to try to create one for this 222, but we'll go ahead and create one for a lesser amount. We'll do the unit price at 185, and we'll do that 825. And then we'll, we'll select that Cornerstone hardware and we'll create our purchase order and I want to show you the main thing there's other videos about creating purchase orders etc and all of these lines on here but notice how it automatically brought in something here by change order and what that is is actually CHS is numbering the change order lines so it's identifying it by that change order line ID because you may have more than one um, line for a CO number. So it's not just the CO number, it's also attaching it to that line. If there's some reason I don't want to call this, and notice that the PO type is change order. If for some reason I want to clear this all out, I could clear it out, but I am issuing this to go along with a change order. Notice over here that the ECC was 222. Um, and the total POs are 226. I could end up going to the ECC worksheet and check marking to use this purchase order um, instead of the um, change order estimated cost that I did to come up with my change order price for my customer. And then my ECC would be showing under. But we're not going to go that far with this right now. I'm, I'm just wanting you to sh see the uh, change order report that um, shows that. So let's close that and let's go back to this report that we were looking at now that we've issued a change order for, I mean a PO for that and you'll see that it's showing you that it's under by $21 what you estimated so that should make you feel comfy. You did a change order price of this and maybe that's just all fine and you've approved it but you somehow managed to get a deal to get it for a little less cost than what you estimated and what the customer agreed to. Um, so you can see that information. So far, we don't have any actual costs attached to these POs, I mean to these change orders, the actual posted cost for posting bills. And what I'd like to do is quickly go post a bill for that um, 
one that we just did so that you can see how because I did uh, cornerstone I've got some bill in for cornerstone hardware you can see that it's going to first of all show you that there's give you a red alert that there are open POs which might help you decide that you need to attach this particular bill to some PO and this is looking for any expirations etc but let's drop down and look at purchase orders and there is that one that we just did so let's attach it to this and it's going to fill in all these fields for us including the sales tax etc and hopefully that matches the bill um, that we got um, sometimes if you use an ampersand in some of these fields you, you might end up having something funny because the title of that was had an ampersand in it and the way HTML reads on web it it kind of doesn't like those ampersands <laughs> so you might want to type out the word and or something um, you might be able to put it back in and just get rid of the ampersand anyway I'm getting sidetracked here but it'll read it as it brings it in and it might put the for some reason JavaScript and webs puts this little AMP there by that at different times but let's go ahead and submit that bill it's not going to give us an overage alert because we did have a change order estimated at a higher price so we don't get an alert and we'll just submit that as unpaid and we'll close this and we're going to come back and do that overage one here in just a minute but let's go ahead and reopen these approved costs let's relook at that report now you can see that it's finding um, that costs have been attached and that the actual costs are over are under what we were estimating our cost to be plus it's showing the change order price and then it's showing how much the price is over or under the actual costs um, the estimated costs I mean the price is over under was 55 so in other words you were estimating a profit on this change order of $55 but it looks like you're going to make $77 on this because the price that you charge to the customer the change order price is $77 more than what the actual costs are that you've posted so right now it's saying you'd make 77 more now notice that this one up here that the PO issued is for hire we have talked about this particular one in an earlier video but let's real quickly go ahead we should have then at the time we noticed the PO was higher we should have contacted and, and um, tried to negotiate with the customer to get this um, price on this change order higher because we know um, look at the price you charged and looked at how much the PO is but let me also just go ahead and I know that was to builders display that PO and I'll go ahead and do a bill for that real quickly just so we can see that report and what's happening and how it's attaching and can read how much has been spent for change order costs let's go to builders display and go ahead and post a bill for that refrigerator that was actually over what we charged on the change order and we'll look for POs and we can see that this one is the refrigerator and it is that amount so let's let that one come in and we'll go ahead and just submit it we're going to get probably a notice oh no because we did issue a PO that's higher so we won't really get a notice and we'll we were showing how you got notices about that in other places but I I'm trying to prove something else here so let's go to change orders menu and let's go ahead again and go to the approved and let's look at that report again now it's showing you um, that you're actually just going to lose money on this change order um, you had POs for higher than this um, here's your price and so it's showing you that you expected to make four hundred and sixty nine dollars but now you're gonna lose eighty six dollars on this compared to the change order price you caught you charge the customer um, versus the cost that's this amount minus the cost minus this amount is minus eighty six dollars 
So it would give you some, you know, by watching this over here, CHS can do this and compare the actual costs just because there was a purchase order attached to that change order. So it can be very valuable to go ahead and just post a purchase order for whoever it is you're going to pay for that cost um, at some point or when you're creating the change order. So hopefully that shows you how to attach a purchase order to a change order and how valuable that can be for this type of analysis. Thank you for watching.